Hello again and welcome to another episode of the Government Transformation Show, the podcast for public sector change makers. I'm Tim Coulthard, Community Director here at Government Transformation Magazine. And my guest today is Deepak Shukla, who is Data and Analytics Lead at Amazon Web Services. We're going to have a conversation around fraud and fraud detection in the public sector. How are current organisations faring in the ongoing fight against fraud? What are some of the issues that they're facing? How can culture change? How can technology support the endeavours? And what are some of the emerging opportunities through things like AI and machine learning to better fight fraud? All of this matters, of course, because protecting the public purse is paramount for civil servants. So lots to get into. So let's jump into that conversation right now. So Deepak, welcome to the Government Transformation Show. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have you here. Yeah, thank you, Tim. And I'm really pleased to be here with you. Excellent. Glad to hear it. So let's uh, let's let's take a, an opportunity to explore some of these issues around data, if we can, in government. Um, I know AWS is doing a lot of work with lots of different agencies and departments. Um, so we're going to explore some of that today. And in particular, aspects around fraud detection, which, again, I know is an area you've got a lot going on. And it's also by happy coincidence, the discussion table topic that AWS is hosting at the forthcoming Government Data Summit. So looking forward to hearing your thoughts around that and teeing up some of those ideas ahead of the day itself. But before we jump into that, always good to do introductions first and get a sense of, of who you are and what you're doing. So perhaps you could just give us a brief overview of your of your kind of career, your current role at AWS, and particularly how you're working with the public sector at the moment. Yeah, so uh, Tim, I've been, uh, so I lead our AWS data and analytics business for UK and Ireland for public sector. So I'm focused around public sector. Uh, My role is to basically bring in all the best of innovation and thought leadership that we are doing uh, and bringing and and investing in for our public sector customers. So I work across industries uh, with the central government, healthcare, um, local councils, authorities, as well as financial regulators uh, within the UK and Ireland. So that's kind of where I'm uh, in and, you know, I'm working with a lot of public sector customers at the moment, having conversations with them around the topic of fraud and uh, and, and, in, and improving citizen experience, uh, which is another important topic for, for public sector. Great. And I'm keen to explore some of that as well. So it sounds like you've got multiple touch points with pretty much most different types of public sector agencies as you say from healthcare to central to local to regulators so i imagine you're exposed to lots of ideas lots of the challenges they're having so hopefully we can tease a few of those out during the the conversation today and you mentioned fraud detection and i think it's obviously something that for the public purse is incredibly important you know being seen to be efficient not to be seen to be losing money wherever possible so an incredibly important area so why does that topic matter in particular to AWS? You know, what are you doing in that space? How are you helping organizations at the moment? Yeah, so look, AWS as an organization, we strive to be the Earth's most uh, customer-centric organization, right? And we are also working towards making Amazon and AWS as the safest place to work globally, right? And we can't achieve these objectives unless and until we have strong fraud management fraud detection capabilities in, 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 in house, right? Which is about, you know, making our people safe and, uh, and, and, and ensuring that, you know, there is a trust within the system uh, as, as, you know, our customers interact with AWS, with Amazon um, and our experience and our um, thinking around fraud and how to manage fraud has actually evolved through our experiences of building amazon.com right so if you look at today amazon.com there are hundreds of transactions hundreds of uh, you know transactions shopping happening on the website and their mobile application and as you know as the, our customers are going through those shopping experiences we are testing them for 2000 types of you know uh, you know, frauds and, you know, the, the attributes, you know, to detect and to ensure that, you know, there aren't any fraudulent activities happening, right? So, so we've learned from our experiences of running Amazon.com and we have actually brought that in to kind of now help a lot of our public sector customers 
uh, globally as well as you know in in UK and Ireland, um, where we are bringing those learnings to apply to public sector uh, so that they get benefited from you know uh, the the all the hard work that we have done you know in building those capabilities right so and for me and for AWS fraud is not uh, something which. Uh, is a is a one year project or you know uh, something that you can deal with in that one to three years. It's an ongoing evolutionary thing. You learn a lot on, during the journey as well, and uh, and we have collated a lot of that learning, which is now benefiting our customers uh, within public sector. Well, and I, I guess as as you say, it, it never stops because the bad guys never stop either, right? So they're always looking for something and you're always, you know, trying to stay ahead of the game and, and that sort of thing. So constant, constant race, I'd imagine. So interested in, I suppose, where we're at now in 2022, you know, a lot of things have happened at pace in the last few years, partly through COVID, lots of new government services were launched, lots of new grant schemes, funding schemes, all kinds of things happening at pace in a time of crisis. And so where we are now in terms of, what's going on in terms of government's ability and focus on tackling fraud, whether that's through public services, public purse, and so on. What are your main takes on the way that government organizations are currently tackling and addressing potential fraud or actual fraud, so prevention and or dealing with it as it as it's spotted? Yeah, so look, I think uh, one of I think one of the best thing that has happened within this area is the creation of that public sector fraud authority. Right, a couple of months ago, with Mark Cheeseman being uh, you know the interim CEO of uh, that organization and authority. So I think that is a, a really good step in the right direction by the government because tackling fraud is as you know as we discussed it's not a one organization problem right so you need an authority which can actually you know uh, create like a government's counter fraud strategy and 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 drive that so so that has you know that's been a good good step in the mix and at the moment if i look at that authority uh, they're focusing on kind of recovering you know frauds which have already been committed right mm -hmm. and uh, recently right but i think what we also need to start thinking about is, you know, building those uh, safeguarding measures within our systems, within our uh, touch points with the fraudulents or the fraudsters, uh, to detect the fraud even before it's committed, and you know, and block that uh, at the front line. So I think, of course, I think it's a good step with the uh, the fraud authority uh, to recover what we have lost because of fraud. But it's also important to build in some sort of a proactive measures into the mix to make sure that uh, you know we are ahead of the game, as you were talking about earlier, from the fraudsters, and and we know and understand them and detect them better uh, at the forefront of their interaction with us. Now. Apart from that, I think uh, one thing which I think will happen at some point is government can't fight fraud on its own, right? I think that is another you know area which I wanted to emphasize on. Now, this is an area where you know this public sector authority and the government needs to work with the financial regulators, right? as well as a lot of public sector organizations, right? Uh, and they need to come together to create a view to detect and identify these fraudsters and block them from committing the crime they are committing, right? So, so I think there is a, a holistic view of um, fighting this, which needs to kind of expand beyond what we are doing. But, but I think we're going to get there. I think it's a good first step to begin with. And I think I see that this authority will evolve into something which is much broader than what it's currently mandated to do. Yeah, and. As, as with so many cases, prevention is better than cure. And so, you know, building in that sort of robustness and systems and processes to, to prevent it happening, I guess, has got to be the, it's got to be the goal. So that's, that's I suppose, the current picture. Um, and, and then, I guess, following from that, the, the question would be then, what can organisations do? What can they be doing practically, both in terms of prevention and detection in this area? And I, and I appreciate that you're probably working with lots of agencies in this space. So, Improving performance and capability in preventing, detecting, resolving fraud in public services. What are those practical steps that you would urge organizations to be focusing on now and then sort of medium and long term? 
Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, I'll just recall a conversation I was having with, a, you know, a large public sector organization, UK, uh, my customer last week, actually. So we were working with them on identifying and, you know, uh, and working on a, a kind of a very complex fraud investigation scenario, right? And, and I looked at what they have in terms of the platform and the capabilities for fraud detection, right? And identification of fraud, right? Now, when we were having that conversation, one of the things we realized myself and my customer was they have a very strong technology base or a platform base and they are also moving towards, you know, cloud, right? So they have already made a lot of progress in terms of how to, you know, identify and tackle fraudulent activities, right? Now, one of the opportunities which I think you know public sector organizations have is to leverage what they've already built, not necessarily within their own organizations, but within you know, the broader public sector bodies, right? So just an example, if let's say HMRC has built something and there is an opportunity for you know leveraging and capitalizing that database and that capability within home office, DWP and you know nhs and the other public sector bodies so i think this is like one thing i will i see that we should leverage on because that will help us save a lot of money first of all plus uh, it will also help us identify and track you know some of the most kind of innovative fraud scenarios as well right uh, in, in in different contexts right so i think that is one area which I think, uh, you know, the government and public bodies should learn from each other and, and bring that together. The other area of, uh, you know, where I see our, our customers uh, doing a lot already and they can improve on is, you know, uh, creating that citizen profile, right? And citizen profile using modern techniques like entity resolution and network generation is another area which will help our public sector organizations to detect and identify fraudulent profiles upfront. Uh, and and you know, as an example, you know, I, I've seen in one of our uh, one of our customer organization. We had a fraudster who kind of registered himself for a claim, right, in the government uh, system, and there wasn't even a single red flag, uh, you know, because he's been doing fraudulent activities for some of the other uh, agencies, right, using different aliases and you know different details, right. But we had a quite a straightforward system, where um, uh, you know, which which was not able to detect this particular, you know, fraudster, right? Now, with the techniques and capabilities like entity resolution and network generation, right, you're not just looking at a profile of a citizen or a fraudster, you're also looking at where does he live, where does he work, right? What are the kind of areas and the routes he follow when he goes, you know, to things, right? And let's say, you know, uh, he live, you know, uh, uh, he or she or somebody has a fraudulent profile lives on a particular address, and there are being, you know, frauds uh, being committed by people living on that particular address. You know, so that adds another dimension into identification of fraudsters uh, and and help the government agencies there, right? So I think, I think we need to kind of enhance the, you know, our ability to profile our citizens and fraudsters. And, and, and bring that uh, into the mix. And, and then I think lastly, I will see, we do a lot of work, you know, sometimes we build a lot of silos within our organizations and, you know, uh, within, the, within the public sector organization. I think there is a need of breaking that silo, right? Because um, it, unless you break that silo and bring those data sets together and those different contexts in which the data has been stored and, and, and you know, has been used, um, uh, you know, we will, you know, we will not be able to create that single view unless we start breaking those silos and, and do that, right? So I think that is also an important element, which I think some public sector organizations are already, you know, uh, working on, and the others could start embarking on, on as a journey. Yeah. It's interesting, as so often it comes down to sharing both kind of knowledge sharing between agencies, what are you working on? How are you tackling this? What ideas can we share? And then data sharing itself in terms of that interoperability, being able to use different data sets to layer up insights around behaviors, around individuals and so on. So, I mean, almost every conversation you think about in terms of the public sector, 
that that collaboration piece just comes through so strongly always you know across technical and sort of cultural boundaries yeah and and thanks to technology right i mean there are uh, now we have a lot which can be used and leveraged right so if you ask me 5 years ago right i wouldn't be very confident in helping you know creating an enriched citizen profile because i'm almost you know all the time reliant on a government database to give me the you know access to the information but now we have a lot of third party data sets up in the market which helps enrich a profile of a you know we are now working with social media data of our citizens and you know and and people that also adds another dimension around the whole behavior of a particular citizen and and helps identify fraud yeah absolutely so huge advances being made more to be done i'm sure but um so looking at this piece where we, i think as you said there's a, there's a great desire to to make improvements here um and sometimes the challenge is what to do first you know where where to tackle this so if i was going to sort of put you on the spot and say what are some top tips you might have for organizations to get started on this improvement journey what what might you recommend to them I think for me fraud uh, detection starts with a strong data foundation right so what i would recommend you know uh, we you know if i have to put my money on detecting fraud i'll put half of it on building the strong data foundation right where i'm collecting right data you know storing it in a, you know and there is a you know concept called evidential data store right so so building those evidential data stores is 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 a key element into um into you know fighting fraud because in future with this authority coming in picture we will be needing data to actually take fraudsters on to the, into the court right and bring in right evidences for you know to fight this battle with them right so this is where you know strong data foundation will give us right capabilities to fight that battle on the ground as well as off the ground with the fraudsters right uh, secondly uh, i will actually look at machine learning ai and advanced analytics capabilities there are a lot of services there are a lot of products already in the market i will look at you know adopting them right so rather than reinventing the wheel and you know start doing things by our own you know i would look at adopting some of these you know capabilities which are there in the market to start driving value immediately and uh, within the process and thirdly i think i'll take a, a very agile approach right breaking the whole problem into small chunks so that we can actually deliver incremental value for our stakeholders instead of waiting for a big reveal and you know in in, in a six months time and a one years time and then by then the industry has moved on so i think these will be my three top tips you know look at the foundations leverage the technologies which are already there in the market and and thirdly you know have an agile and and a kind of a a learning mindset uh, you know as as you go into this journey because fraudsters are becoming more smart and we have you know we need to be ahead of the game and 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 you know and 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 keep that rolling absolutely that's that's super helpful and very practical stuff so hopefully people take away those those tips and, and think about how their own organizations might address them um and so as we as we sort of count down to the government data summit um i'm interested in and in sort of hearing from you kind of what what you're looking to share with our audience of sort of ddat leaders in civil service you know what are the, some of the messages you want to get across to them and then on the flip side, of course, maybe what do you want to hear from them? What are you looking to hear, learn, understand about their issues, their challenges, what they've got going on? So that that sharing piece first, what are, what are those kind of key ideas you're looking to communicate with the audience? Yeah, so Tim, I'll, I'll actually start the other way around, right? I mean, I, I will actually focus on uh, kind of listening more and more about the challenges that they are having, right? So one of the big objective for me from the Government Data Summit is to understand uh with the broad set of people who are attending uh, the summit uh, what are the challenges they are having right what are their immediate issues you know and i want to look at the bigger issues that they have to a smaller set of issues where you know this is a particular scenario we've been unable to identify and detect that and and hear and make notes and understand those right in terms of sharing i will um, actually look forward to share some of the big fraud uh, related analytics uh, you know programs we are running for public sector organizations not just in uk but globally as well there is a lot of learning um, you know we can bring in from what 
AWS is doing in the US, Canada, and Australia. Uh, and, you know, and, and we can, you know, leverage the learning from other countries and start adopting that in the UK. So I think that is another thing I would like love to share with our stakeholders. Um, and thirdly, you know, I look to kind of uh, share some sort of thinking around, uh, you know, how artificial intelligence and machine learning is, is changing the game in the way we detect fraud. So I will touch upon that and, um, and, and hopefully uh, it will be a, a good conversation with all of them. Yeah. Absolutely. And great that you're bringing in some of those emerging technologies, because I know there's, there's great, there's great interest and maybe an, organizations looking to understand the art of the possible at the moment what's what's real what's coming over the horizon so great to mix some of those ongoing case studies with some of those emergent opportunities as well so that that promises to be a great conversation a great day of, of chatting through with public sector peers so i think we've probably run up against uh against time here and um it's been great to explore some of these um it's sort of emergent issues around uh fraud detection some of the practical steps that organizations can take because you know clearly doing nothing is not an option so some of those practical tips and, and sort of action points are key to adopting and, and making progress in this area so all all remains for me to say Deepak is it's thank you for joining us uh we're looking forward to hosting you at the government data summit uh but thanks so much for the conversation no thank you tim and uh it was my pleasure speaking to you and i'm so looking forward to join you guys on 20th of october yeah so there we have it my thanks again to Deepak for joining me for that conversation today sharing those insights and practical examples and giving us a glimpse of how technology can help organizations in the ongoing fight against fraud and to improve their fraud detection capabilities. As we mentioned, Deepak and AWS will be joining us at the Government Data Summit on the 20th of October to host the discussion table around fraud detection. It's a must attend event for any DDAP peers looking to experience new ways of thinking, share ideas and benchmark capability with their peers and other sector organizations. So if you'd like to join us on the date, it's not too late to register, just follow the link in the show notes attached to this episode. That's about it for now, but we'll be along soon with another conversation with a public sector changemaker. Until then, goodbye.